Hello and welcome back to my 10 favorite people. Hope you're doing well. I have to be 100% honest. Last week's FOMC meeting absolutely shocked me and I truly could not believe that even with inflation remaining stubborn above 3%, the unemployment rate still sitting below 4%, and risk assets like the S&P 500 and Bitcoin still pushing new all-time highs, that Powell would have the audacity to come out and say that monetary policy is still restrictive and they're expecting to do multiple rate cuts this year. And of course, all of this is occurring while the government is still running massive deficits. Last year, we had a deficit of 1.7 trillion, and this year is on pace to be significantly higher. And as of Q1 of 2024, the quarterly U.S. Treasury issuance was as high as Q2 of 2020 when we were in the middle of a global shutdown and pandemic. And now the reason why this was so shocking for me is I actually believe that the Fed was going to fight inflation. They were going to keep rates higher for longer and they were going to use the Treasury's deficit and issuance to keep the economy afloat and keep the labor market strong while they brought down inflation. But it doesn't really look like they have any intention to do that. And this really forced me to reassess my views because on this channel, I spend a lot of time talking about my short term concerns and expectations for a correction in the short term while I remain incredibly bullish in the long term with a portfolio that's 80% long, 20% ish cash. But after seeing what the Fed said in that meeting and not even just what they're saying, because we know the Fed lies and they jawbone and say things that are more aggressive than what they intend. And then when they want to be dovish, they try to act hawkish, even while they're doing things in the background that don't back up what they're saying whatsoever. But the thought that we would have rate cuts in 2024 with an elevated inflation rate and these huge government deficits it just makes it incredibly hard for me to justify talking about any short-term or medium-term concerns when the long-term outlook is so clear because of what they're doing to the currency via all of this debt and issuance. And honestly, this makes so much sense. If we take a look at the federal deficit at 6.5% of GDP currently in the red here, and its correlation with the unemployment rate historically, you can see that historically in the US, the unemployment rate would lead the US Treasury deficit. So in the blue, if you had the unemployment rate going up, the Treasury would issue more bonds and run a deficit to strengthen the labor market and the economy. And then once the unemployment rate started going down, they would start reducing their deficit as well. Same thing after 2008, huge spike in the unemployment rate huge spike in the deficit. As the labor market started strengthening, the deficit starts to come down. But look at what's happened recently. We have a huge deficit running right now to keep this market strong while the Fed has these rates elevated to fight inflation. And I was always so confused as to how the labor market was remaining so strong. But this chart really maps it out very nicely. The unemployment rate would be significantly higher if the Fed wasn't running this huge deficit and issuing bonds at a rate that they were during a global shutdown and pandemic when the unemployment rate had spiked to about 15% in one or two months. And I mean, think about it. So this chart is essentially telling us that the deficit being run right now and the issuance of treasuries being done right now at an unemployment rate of 3.9% is the same level that they were doing when the unemployment rate was 15% because the globe shut down. And of course, that means that risk assets have continued to go higher. Inflation has remained stubborn. And even with all of this going on, we're not expected to keep rates higher for longer. And the Fed is still planning on doing rate cuts this year. And I don't think they're just saying that. I think they actually mean it. I think 3% inflation is close enough for them and they're going to act like they want it to get to 2% when in reality, if the unemployment rate goes any higher or if the S&P 500 starts to sell off aggressively, they will cut rates 
even with inflation at 3% because they have no incentive to let this economy collapse when they can just devalue the currency and keep the party going. And of course, all of these things are why I've always been so long-term bullish on Bitcoin and why even when I expect short-term corrections, which I still do, by the way, I do still think we go lower in the short term, I haven't sold my positions to buy back in lower and I've kept my cash allocation relatively low because some of these long-term charts are just incredibly clear. I mean, look at this trend of treasury issuance. Look at this trend of US treasury debt outstanding. And of course, all of this devalues the dollar, which puts upward pressure on risk assets. And when we see the correlation of risk assets, it's very clear that the only thing that matters here is what's happening to the currency. That's why we see Bitcoin so correlated to the S&P 500, which is correlated to real estate, which is correlated to really anything priced in dollars. And I just don't think the Fed is going to let things crash and crumble when they can just devalue the currency with the help of the Treasury and their deficits to keep risk assets afloat in the medium to long term. And of course, when you look at the current size of Bitcoin and cryptocurrency as a whole, compared to money supply, compared to global debt, compared to the Fed's balance sheet, compared to the net worth of some billionaires, even though Bitcoin feels incredibly expensive to us at 70,000, because maybe we followed Bitcoin since it was 15K, or maybe some of you were even following it back when it was 3K. Maybe some of you were even following it when it was in the hundreds. But when you look at the size of this market compared to other risk assets and other pools of capital, and now you throw this ETF narrative on top of it, of course, we've seen a slowdown recently, and this is something we've expected. But over the next one, two, three years, as long as inflows keep trickling into these ETFs and taking supply off the market, why do we bother ourselves so much with short-term speculation and drama when the long-term is so clear and the Fed only has one path they can take? And we don't only just have amazing demand drivers. I mean, look at the supply drivers as well. Now, I don't think the Bitcoin having event in itself really matters much, but the issuance decreasing for the next four years and getting cut in half will have upward pressure in my in my opinion i don't think it's gonna cause price to double immediately but a reduction in supply combined with this new demand driver where everybody can allocate very easily in their brokerages and in their retirement accounts combined with what the fed is doing makes it really hard for me to justify being concerned and bearish over short-term stuff on this channel. And of course, all of this is incredibly clear when we zoom out and look at Bitcoin's price history. Of course, there's huge bear markets along the way. There's black swans, there's shakeouts, there's corrections. But is it really worth it to bother ourselves with all of that short term noise when I'm sure most of us, including myself, and I've always said it in my videos, I'm long term bullish on this asset because of what's happening with deficits and interest rates and the currency. Is it really worth it to spend so much mental energy and time fighting over short term corrections and rallies? And is the local top here? Have we not locally topped yet? Are we going to rally into the having? Are we going to rally after the having? So this is really something I've been thinking about for the past week or so ever since this FOMC meeting. And it's made me decide that I'm going to spend a lot less time and energy worrying about the short term and instead focus more on the long term and where I see things going with inflation, the unemployment rate. And of course, imagine what happens if this unemployment rate starts spiking. What's that then going to do to these deficits? What's that then going to do to interest rates? So I think it's so much easier to zoom out, look at the big picture, dollar cost average when you want to, take some profits when you want to. And of course, if you think there are assets that are going to outperform Bitcoin like I do, maybe you allocate a portion of your portfolio to those assets. But I just think I'm going to spend less mental energy and less time focusing on short term concerns and short term price action when my long term thesis 
is so clear. But anyway, I think I'll leave it there. I think I've already made this video long enough. Do I think things will continue to go down in the short term? Does it matter for the long term? No. Ethereum and Solana do look like they want to consolidate here, which is amazing for the longer term. Bitcoin still looks a little bit weak in my opinion. Does it matter in the long term? No. So I think I will spend more of my time and energy focusing on long-term theses and more broader perspectives on where things are going versus getting so caught up in the short-term noise because i do think that in the long term this etf availability combined with the supply reduction of the having will continue to put upward pressure on bitcoin's price and i don't think the fed has the backbone to do what's needed to calm this economy down and bring down inflation and i think they will send risk assets like bitcoin significantly higher but anyway, let me know what you think. Do you find yourselves getting caught up in the short term a little too much as well? Do you think the Fed is making a mistake in what they're doing and did they surprise you? And of course, even if we are long-term bullish, there are still a lot of ways to mess it up that I try to avoid, like overly using leverage or buying very small and risky projects with a huge portion of your portfolio. But I think as long as you stay relatively conservative and patient, very hard to outperform being long-term bullish and just buying and holding. But anyway, let me know what you think. I know this is a bit of a change for me, but I really took the last week to just kind of sit there and reassess what I'm doing with my strategy and what I'm doing on this channel. So let me know what you think. I'm looking forward to the comments on this one, and hopefully I will talk to you soon.